Hello everyone, I hope you are doing great. This is Ava Yagana and you are watching IELTS Study. Okay, so if you are an IELTS candidate or you are thinking of doing it one day because of studying or academic pursuits or even immigration plans, you might uh, need uh, the structure and the strategies that uh, we are going to cover today. Because IELTS consists of four skills, one of which is reading, that is going to be focused today. Reading uh, might seem somehow difficult for many candidates, while it might seem a little bit easier for others because uh, our understanding of a language is different. Maybe you are into studying uh, English language books or reading different kinds of books in English. That's why when it comes to reading strategies and skills, you have uh, somehow that confidence to go for it. And of course, your job is much easier than a person who has never read a book. So that is something that you need to consider because a lot of candidates just believe that when something is difficult for other people, it has to be easy or difficult for others as well. No, depends on the kind of experience and words that you have uh, put uh, into a language, your experience, your understanding would be completely different from the other one. So with that said, whether you are good at it or not, it is something that has to be done in order to give you the opportunity to go to the next level, which is your uh, achievement. Okay, so um, as I said, you need to go for the reading. What depends on the kind of uh, IELTS, uh, let's say, uh, module that uh, you are choosing, uh, some elements would vary. There are two types uh, for IELTS, the academic and, of course, the general training. We will discuss both of them, but a lot of things are common, I mean, from the strategy point of view. So uh, something that has to be mentioned here from the beginning is the fact that there are different kinds of skills that we have to develop in order to gain that kind of confidence and expertise. So uh, the reading itself is not difficult, but uh, in order to evaluate your reading comprehension and uh, proficiency, the IELTS experts design a lot of questions. Okay, so there are many questions that you have to deal with. Why? Why are there so many question types? Because they want to make sure that you can read uh, in English and you can understand a lot of important data. So actually, it is a very reliable uh, test and a strategy to uh, make sure that you are in the right place to enter the university, to pursue your academic uh, goals, or even to get that job offer. So they want to make sure that actually you deserve that kind of opportunity. And later on, you can, um, you know, make a living. You can continue living in that very specific country or that kind of environment that you are applying for. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the skills, as I said, the strategies, and of course, different things related to scoring system, because there are a lot of points that you have to take care of if you really want to get a good score. And lastly, we want to know about different mistakes that candidates tend to uh, make. And uh, I want you to know about the example about the spelling or about handwriting. If you are just doing the paper-based one, you need to go for clarity. Because if I cannot read your answer correctly, you are going to lose marks. It is a fact, isn't it? Okay, so let's move on and see what academic reading has to offer. We have 40 questions and we have 60 minutes to do the task. So as you might uh, think, there are a lot of things that have to be done within a very uh, short period of time. So 60 minutes, but 40 questions. It is taken out of a passage from a magazine. It tends to be academic, but uh, it is somehow simplified. You know what I'm saying? So that a person often, uh, you know, um, somehow 15 year old uh, can understand and answer the questions. So what I'm saying is that it is not that much difficult, unlike what you might think. It is designed in a way that uh, even a, a 15 year old guy can do it. 
So the experts uh, make reading passages, and uh, they just uh, take these kind of passages out of uh, some newspapers or magazines like Guardian or New Scientist. They look for some semi-academic texts, okay? Because very academic ones would be really difficult to understand, and no one of a you know a public can understand it easily. So it is somehow semi-academic. And there are three passages of 900 words, each of which has 2,200 words at least. All topics are of general interest. So as I said, it is nothing very specific. So everyone can understand what the passage is saying, that the topic is uh, of general interest, written in all types, logical argument, descriptive or narrative size. So there are different types of styles, and that is not our concern, because uh, what we are looking for is getting that score that we are in need of, and just uh, taking it to the next step. Hmm? Okay. The general training has the same amount of time. So you've got 60 minutes and you've got 40 questions to go for. You have two or three everyday social survival texts and it is mostly based on workplace or some advertisements, for example, because as I told you, general training candidates are mostly likely to go for job offers or maybe immigration process. So they want to make sure that a person who is applying for that kind of situation uh, can communicate, can understand different parts and passages of English language. So you've got one long descriptive text in a general context as well. It means that uh, you have six passages, for example, and only one of them seems to be difficult. When you take a look at it, you can compare that difficult one in general training to that uh, you know, of, a, uh, of an academic one. I mean, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Uh, apart from that, you need to work on different kinds of instructions like rules, advertisements, something relates to your workplace and stuff like this. Okay, so a lot of people just ask me about a very specific strategy with the help of which they can enhance their knowledge and, you know, get to uh, the level that they are in need of. But when I ask them, how often do you read serious English? Uh, they just, uh, you know, cannot uh, give me a correct answer. They would say that rarely sometimes or something like that. That is a big mistake because if you really want to improve your understanding of a language and reading uh, specifically, you have to be a good reader. Otherwise, you cannot have it improved, okay? And meanwhile, a lot of other people believe that general, uh, let's say, training uh, reading part is much more easier than the academic one. Uh, I would say that, yes, uh, the content uh, would seem much easier, and that is a fact. But the scoring system is different as well, that I will explain later. So uh, if I want to give you a very short explanation for that, there is no difference, to be honest with you. Uh, IELTS experts are much more intelligent than what you might think. So they are assessing different things by different types of questions and different content because uh, their purpose is different, okay? But it doesn't mean that one of them is easier or one of them is more difficult because uh, they consider every aspect that you might think of uh, in order to give you that kind of uh, scoring, uh, let's say, uh, evaluation that you want to know. Okay, so uh, you need to read a lot. You need to read a lot in order to enhance your knowledge, in order to uh, enhance your speed. Because as we mentioned, you have 60 minutes and you need to answer 40 questions. If you want to be a slow reader, of course, you will face a lot of problems. You cannot actually finish it. You need to be a fast reader. In order to become a fast reader, you need to read a lot so that your eyes, your brain, and everything can collaborate efficiently in a way that you can do the task within the, uh, that's a limited amount of time. 
So you have to do it systematically. Read actively. Ask probable questions that examiners might do the same. You know, examiners are people. They just open their magazine, their you know, newspapers, and they look for different kinds of questions. You can think of that as well. If you take a look at the newspaper, open it and think that if I were the examiner, what type of questions would be chosen here. So that is very important and that way you can enhance your general English as well because all the skills uh, can be developed that way if you do it systematically as I uh, suggest. How are the reading skills tested? We said that uh, they are testing the uh, reading skill very efficiently. They are doing their skills but not your general knowledge. With that said, I mean that uh, if you are an expert in that very specific, uh, you know, field that you are reading about, or no, you have no clue about, uh, you're good to go. You do not need to be a professional reader or, you know, scientist about that very specific topic. Everything that you need for the questions is in your reading passages. So you have lots of words, you have a fairly short uh, amount of time, and they want to assess how quickly you can get uh, that information. So the speed is important. Being a fast reader is not easy for, uh, for you know, the, uh, the person who is applying for another language, the second language learner, or the third language learner. Even a lot of people have problems with reading in their own language, uh, you know? So some people are faster, some people are not. And you have to train your mind, you have to train your eyes and brain in order to become a fast reader. There are different kinds of uh, steps that we need to take in order to uh, just do the reading part. Firstly, as we uh, said earlier, you need to read 3,000 words uh, in a relatively short amount of time, which is uh, 60 minutes. So uh, you might say that, how can I possibly do that? How can I possibly read all the words in that very limited amount of time? You're right. We do not need to read all the words which are presented in our passages. We just try to skim. So the first skill that we are getting uh, some help from is skimming. Skimming is related to the technique uh, with the help of which we just understand what's going on. We just uh, get the gist of the whole story. You can just do it with different kinds of styles and different kinds of forms uh, that I'm going to teach you later in the next upcoming videos. But totally, you just get the idea what, uh, for example, this passage is about. You read the first sentences of each paragraph to see what's going on and have some idea about the whole paragraph. Remember, you do not need to read all the words. And that is the beauty of the reading skill. You just do that in your language if you think objectively. When you want to uh, read a book or even a piece of news, you would just go for skimming. At first, you just, you know, look. Uh, at uh, the content in order to understand what the most important features are, what the most important parts are, and then you will make your mind up whether to go for it or not. This will help your efficiency. And uh, you just do it every day in your life, uh, understand whether you want to continue working on that very specific book or uh, you know, article or it is not your choice. Okay, the next thing is about scanning. Scanning begins by you looking at the questions. You just take a look at the questions and you would understand what exactly you should be looking for. Imagine you want to just drive, but you have no destination. You just get into the car, you start the car, but you don't know where to go. You just drive. So after a while, you will be confused. You will uh, experience uh, that uh, feeling of exhaustion. Uh, you will be confused because you have no idea about your destination. And uh, having no goal or having no objective in reading is exactly like the metaphor that I just shared with you. So scanning begins by looking at the questions. You should see different kinds of keywords and then go for them in the passages. So sometimes it is a number, maybe there are some nouns, dates, places. Then when you know what to look for, 
you would start reading the passage and then you see those keywords you would speed down and just understand what's going on finally uh, you do need to practice for details then you just uh, understand where exactly the information is you just go for details but remember you do not need to read for detail every time because the time is limited and we are pressed for the time we have to be so fast but as far as you detect that there is something which is related to the question you just start reading for detail because you want to make a decision for example is it true is it false is it a not given statement or for the other types of questions the same story you need to uh, slow down and take care of the question more explicitly and you should understand for example is it most or is it a more you know for example in this statement it is written that uh, australia is the biggest country in the world when you go for the answer in order to check uh in the passage you should understand whether it is the biggest in the uh in the world or in for example that uh, area okay some parts of the world it is important is it about now or is it about past is it about expensive or is it about inexpensive you know these are some ideas that you have to double check to make up your mind and go for the answers there are different types of questions as we said ielts is a very very professional test because it wants to make sure that you are a good reader how can it uh, achieve its goal by designing different kinds of questions so it's a good combination of question types you might call it five but when you just take a look at it you can see eight sub questions as well the number is not important you should just know some ideas about each of them and practice for them so that you have uh, that kind of mentality about the strategy behind answering each of these uh, let's say type of questions so the first one is about multiple choice you know there are some choices and you need to go for it you have identifying which has two uh, subheadings like true false not given information or yes no not given uh, you might say that what's the difference between these two ones as you can see on the slide true false not given is related to the information okay but yes no not given is associated with the writer's view it is not a fact but true false not given is about something which is factual but yes no not given is about the author's opinion meanwhile we just uh, have different kinds of questions about matching you need to match the information to the paragraph okay there are different kinds of subheadings for that as well like headings to a paragraph like a b features sentence endings and uh, here you can see some stars uh, they imply the fact that in reading uh, sometimes or let's put it like uh, usually the questions are in order so the ones with stars make it clear that the answer should be in order but sometimes as you see for some specific kind of questions like matching information to a paragraph um, it can be in order or not so when you know about these things you will have a better opinion about what to do and how to tackle the type of question efficiently you have also completion type of question so you need to complete a sentence the summary or the diagram label or the next type is about short answer as you see both of these ones are uh, somehow except for the uh, subheadings of the completion are in order so when did it happen for example for short answer uh, who just invented that these are some questions which need you to answer them with short sentences or uh, let's say some words like one two or three the instruction will clarify how many words you are able to write about so there we go with 
uh, how to answer true false not given because a lot of people are struggling with these type of questions totally people are i mean candidates are divided in two groups uh, one of these groups is really okay with it they really understand it and without any uh, trouble they really can uh, understand and answer the questions rapidly but on the other hand, a lot of candidates have difficulty and find these type of questions really difficult. So the most important thing that you should uh, understand is about the fact that you do not rely on your assumption in these kind of uh, questions. You do not need to have the background information about uh, that very specific um, you know, passage. You should look at the passage and answer from the facts presented. We will talk about it today a lot. So if you are spending a lot of time and cannot find the answer, it's because maybe the information that you are looking for is not given, basically. So imagine that you are looking for something, you just uh, read the text and you see nothing as uh, just, you know, your guide. So you can simply understand it's not given. Therefore, you shouldn't waste your time. And remember, it is very unlikely for the IELTS to give you the not given answer uh, as the first question because they don't want to confuse you. They don't want to distract you and overwhelm you. That's why a not given answer is very rare to appear uh, for the first question. So true simply means the statement agrees with the information in the text. It means that if you see uh, the same information uh, on the question has been presented on the passage as well, but different words, it is a true. So it's very important because IELTS totally and uh, reading uh, in particular is about synonyms. So it is synonymous. You wouldn't see the same exact vocabulary on the question and, of course, on the, uh, uh, you know, uh, passage. So you wouldn't see the same words. You would see the synonyms, the alternatives, uh, the equivalents. So the more vocabulary you know about, the faster you will understand and identify uh, those kind of synonyms. What about false? If the statement contradicts with the information in the text, it is a false. So you read something uh, in the passage, but in the question exactly the opposite point uh, is uh, presented. So it is a false. And not given simply means there is no information about it in the text. Whether it is true, we do not know. Whether it is false, we do not know. Why? Because the author hasn't talked about it. So here we are going to talk about bananas. Of course, it is not a, a reading passage. It's a very short and simple, uh, let's say, paragraph uh, that uh, has been, uh, you know, created by IDP. And I found it very interesting to talk about because it's very simple, but at the same time, it can teach you about the difference between true, false, and not given uh, in a very short amount of time. So take a look at uh, the question. The question or the statement says banana C is the best quality. Okay, so you should be looking for the banana C and uh, distinguish whether it is the best quality or not. I want you to pause the video for uh, a minute and make your mind up about this question. Is it a true? Is it a false? Or is it a not given one? Just do it and then play the recording once more. So uh, let's see what's going on here. I hope that you've done the a task, of course. At the local store, there are three types of bananas being sold. Banana A, which is sold on the middle shelf, costs $1 per kilo. On the bottom shelf, you will find banana B, which costs $2 per kilo and is of a very good quality. The top shelf is reserved for banana C, which costs $3 per kilo. So, is it true, false, or not given? I want you to take your time and uh, read the passage, and then uh, after just having uh, the video paused, play it, and we will see whether you've got it correctly or not. 
Okay, I hope you've done it. Yes? Have you just read the passage and made your mind up? Is it true? Is it false? Is it a not given one? So please make sure that you do the stuff because if you just listen to me and do not uh, act uh, accordingly, you will not see a lot of, you know, uh, changes in your uh, reading uh, behavior. So banana C uh, is uh, this. The top shelf is reserved for banana C, which costs $3 per kilo. So the, the only information about banana C is presented here is about its location and cost. So banana C is the most expensive uh, one among these three items. But as I told you earlier, you cannot make assumptions based on your knowledge because a lot of people would say that, okay, as far as it is, the most expensive one, it has to be the best quality. No, it is not true. Actually, we do not know about it, whether it is the best quality or not. So the most expensive one is not necessarily the best one. And we know about, for example, uh, banana B because it says which costs $2 per kilo and is of very good quality. But about banana C, the only information that has been given to us is about its location and price. So the information is absent and therefore it is not given. Remember, if the information you need to answer the question is not there, so it means that uh, the uh, answer is not given because you don't know whether it is true, whether it is false. We have no information showing the, uh, let's say, philosophy and uh, reason behind that. What is the advice here? I want you to understand the fact that if you do not know about the word or words, do not uh, just, you know, uh, uh, get stressed because a lot of people get stressed and they say that, okay, I don't understand these words. So how can I answer these questions? Just if there is a difficult word, be, uh, relax because it is going to be explained later on. Okay. And maybe, not maybe, of course, it is not going to be explained uh, very directly. But as I told you, IELTS test totally and uh, specifically uh, this very skill that we're talking about uh, reading is designed uh, based on synonyms. So you should be looking for synonyms and equivalents. For example, here it is said something, but in the passage, the same meaning is presented, but different words. So you should practice this skill, okay? Because you need to develop that kind of reading habit. When you read something, do not check every item and do not go for, you know, dictionary. Do not look up for the meanings every now and again. Sometimes just try to understand the whole meaning and try to ask yourself different kinds of questions about the reading. This is called active reading. This way you will develop the skill that we are talking about. You know, you will see that even though you do not understand a lot of words, a lot of words may seem so difficult or out of your leg, uh, you can answer the questions because uh, those words are either not needed for the answers or uh, are explained later on. We have another passage here, which is a little bit more difficult. So uh, I want you to take a photo or screenshot out of this passage because we are going to have some questions out of it. But uh, I couldn't have uh, both of them together. So I want you to take a picture because later on you are going to answer the questions. OK, please. Follow me because you will gain a lot of information out of this. And it is really worth taking your phones and just uh, take some pictures. Uh, you will be rewarded when you see that you can answer the questions correctly after a while. That is so uh, unique. You know, the experience is something that is really uh, worthwhile. Okay, so true false not given. As I said, you need to make up your mind whether the same information is presented whether it is somehow contradictory or uh, uh, just, you know, nothing has been said about the text, about the question in the passage. So remember that scanning means looking at the questions. Firstly, we need to uh, do that. We just read the question. 
They say Aboriginal Australians are descended from the inhabitants of Africa. Okay, so first we need to decide what's the key word here. We can say the key words here are Africa, descendants from, and uh, these things. So you know where to look for. The, far, the first paragraph is uh, related to that. Take a look. Modern humans ventured out of Africa. I don't know ventured out, but that's okay. Some 80,000 years ago, while the ancestors of Aboriginals Australians were part of this migration. Recent genomic analysis reveals a rare and un unexpected later development. So let's see. Okay, so are descended from the inhabitants of Africa? Is it true or not? It is true. Great, I'm sure that most of you have answered that correctly. So let's move on and talk about the next one. Ancestors of Aborigines settled in Australia about 80,000 years ago. So let's get back to uh, the information. Let me let me just check it out. What did the question? Aha. Look, I just did it on purpose because I didn't understand the question. I just wanted to check it out. When you do not understand the statement, how can you get back and just look for it? Sometimes you see that students just read the question and go to the passage. Read the question, go to the passage. Um, so many times, okay? It is wrong because you are wasting your time. You have to read. You have to understand the question, the statement, and understand it, not just read it, okay? Identify the keywords and then go for uh, finding it. So here, the keywords are settled, okay, and 80,000. Because you can see that 80,000, but it is not your answer. Your answer is located in the second paragraph. And vividly, you can see that it is 50,000. Okay, so Aboriginal Australians arrived in a single migration to Australia at least 50,000 years ago. So here you've got your answer that is false because here you've got 80,000. So definitely it is a false. The next one, Aboriginal Australians are the most genetically diverse race in the world. One very specific tip for you here is about these very strong words. I mean, the most, the best, the greatest. These are very strong, huh? These are exaggerated. When you see these kind of superlative adjective forms, just take a moment and step back and read the text more analytically, okay? Because it is... Uh, likely to be, uh, you know, not given because we do not know whether in the whole world it is going to be the most, the best, the worst. It's very strong. Okay. So when you see these kind of uh, strong uh, superlative adjectives, you, you should, uh, you know, be more careful because it is unlikely to be true. Okay. So let's get back and see. You can just uh, see that in the last part. This means that there is the greater genetic diversity between Aboriginal people living in the east and west of Australia. So here you can see there is between much more culturally diverse races like the indigenous people of Siberia and North America. You can see uh, the word uh, greater, okay, and more culturally diverse, but it is not the most. We do not know actually whether it is the most or not. So it is greater but it is, uh, we do not know whether it is the greatest or not. So as far as we have no idea about these very strong uh, comparison, we would go for not given because maybe it is, maybe it is not. We have no specific and inclusive idea about it. Remember, even if you are uh, a you know, specialist in this realm, you have, you have studied history, you are the professor, you cannot uh, just bring your own knowledge and experience into reading. You can just rely on the words and the passage and the sentences uh, uh, presented. Because maybe uh, you've got that kind of knowledge. You would say that, yes, it is true. But you will uh, you know, lose marks because they wouldn't go for the real answer. They just base their, um, you know, correction on the text. If it is true, it has to be seen there. If it is wrong, it has to be detected there. 
if you cannot uh, distinguish anything in the passage, it is a not given one. That's it. If you've got the three of them correct, good for you. Well done. You've got the understanding of it. So uh, I'm sure that you've understood that the reading uh, test is mostly about uh, synonyms. It is synonymous. You should be looking for the same meanings, but different words. Okay. So for example, you've got settled, but uh, you've, you've got arrived on the other side. You have to uh, just increase your knowledge about synonyms. Just uh, try to read as much as possible so that you will gain a lot of information about the essential vocabulary. And of course, you do not need to know every single word to be able to answer the questions correctly. That is a fact as well, because nobody knows every word that is presented there. Even native speakers have a lot of difficulty with many words as far as they are academic or they are, you know, uh, very uh, special words. So you do not need those words uh, to be known to you because they are either explained in the whole process or the synonyms are given to you. And that is very heartwarming because you do not need any specific information about uh, that uh, field. And be careful of the distractors because there are a lot of distractors like genetic diversity, it is not the same as culturally diverse. So you have to understand the fact that uh, you have some ideas that are close together, but different meaning. These kind of uh, differences uh, want to make you believe they are the same, but actually they are not the same. Okay. For example, in the previous uh, statement that we talked about, it was greater, but it wasn't the greatest. Okay. We, we did not know whether it was the greatest or not. So it's very important to be known here. Now it's a general candidate's turn because I want to teach you a lot about this strategy. Of course, the academic candidates can benefit from this uh, tips as well. So stay tuned because you're going to take a lot of uh, advantages out of this part. So here we go with matching question. This is the best example where you can see that the ILSS designers do not use uh, the exact words, but rather the synonyms, because you need to go for uh, the other words that mean the same as what you can see in the questions, but different words. So there we go with matching questions. For which advertisements are the following statements true? You've got three types of questions. The first one is, which two jobs are in restaurants? So two jobs need to be clarified and selected. The next question, which advertisement is for someone to look after children? And the last one is about a job which involves supervising other staff. So, of course, you are not going to see the same words, you know, not restaurants, not uh, children, or maybe not supervising the exact word, but the synonyms, because as I've already mentioned, IELTS reading is based on synonyms and it is synonymous. So, it is not a surprising fact to see that the words are different, but the meaning is the same. Okay, so let's see. Uh, we've got the first paragraph, paragraph A. And you need to know that the number of paragraphs is by far more than the number of questions. So all the paragraphs cannot be the answers for the questions because we do not have the same number for the questions and the paragraphs. Take a look at the title here. We've got experienced waiting staff. Okay, so here if you are a good reader, you can understand that waiting staff is somehow related to restaurants and we need to read the whole passage in order to be sure that whether our assumption is correct or not. So Shingerly eating house, eating house, another thing that shows us that uh, it is somehow related to, can you tell me which of them is related to? So I just read the question and repeat it in order to uh, help your memory. So the job which is related to restaurants or a job which is related to children or maybe supervising staff, which of them is it related to? Or maybe none of them. We have uh, the other actually keywords here as well, waiting a staff to join our service team. Can you tell me which of them it is related to? The other word that just um, attracts my attention is about 
hospitality. So if your answer is A, which is I mean、uh, actually restaurants, it is correct. So the first question wants you to name two jobs which are related to restaurants. Okay. So there we go with the first answer for it. Let's move on and the second paragraph. Experienced store manager. So store manager. It is a full-time role, and it has other specifications that you should read about. And also, we've got something like opening and closing the store, hiring and assigning staff, and conducting training. So, can you tell me whether it is related to restaurants, or it is related to children, or it is somehow linked to supervising other staff? Which of them would you vote for, or maybe none of them? Yes, that's right. So if you go for supervising other staff, you have、uh, answered that correctly. Number three, data entry. It means position, short-term project, two to four weeks in eastern suburbs, of Melbourne. So you've got the numbers of,、uh, let's say, hours, and of course you must be available to work within the range of works and the duration, and that's it. So, which of them would you go for? Is it related to restaurants, or children, or maybe supervising? Of course, we've、uh, answered that, but I'm just telling you. Maybe you want to change your answer as well, and maybe none of them. So, which of them would you go for? None of them. It is not talking about any of the items that have been mentioned. The next one. Community volunteer visitor with ID skills. Are you looking to give back to the community? So here we go with the information. Here we think about age care、um, a little differently. We believe that older people can sleep, still lead a meaningful life. You will be teaching the basics of iPad use to your older citizens. That's it. Which of them would you go for?、Uh, is it related to restaurants or children? Or maybe is it related to supervising other staff or none of them? Yep, you've got it all right. So that is not related to other staff or children or restaurants. Central Highlands food. So we've got the word food. Central Highlands food is looking for a second chef to join our team producing local. Seasonal fresh food. So it is talking about restaurants, and then we've got this word, busy restaurant. So this one is the best choice for number one. So which two jobs are in restaurants? One of them is E, and the other one was A, if you remember. And the last question, I believe, is about nanny. So maybe you do not know about the meaning of nanny. So we go for more information. For two-year-old and four-year-old brothers, single father, and the rest of it. So here we go with the one that has to work with children. So nanny means a person who takes off the children. The other signal here is about two and four-year-old brothers. So which makes it clear that we are talking about actually nanny. So let's move on and see. The point that has to be clarified here is about the importance of、uh, the vocabulary because this is where you should be looking for synonyms, as you are not going to see the same words here. You need to extend your vocabulary and the command of your、uh, vocabulary list. The more you know about this, the better and the faster you will gain access to the. Uh, let's say right information. Or that you are looking for some tips、uh, to be given here, and I am here to do that for you. The first thing that I want to mention here is about、uh, the stages and the steps that you need to take in order to get a good result. Remember the metaphor that I gave you about、uh, driving and cars. So I said that when you get into your car, if you have no idea about your destination, you will be confused、uh, that uh, which uh, you know road you have to take on stuff like this. The same story is true for your reading skill as well. You have to take a look at the question and identify the keywords, and then you can go for the passage and look for the whole 
idea and the keywords out there. Don't read every word, but read to get the general idea about what the passage is completely about. And if there is a picture, for example, look at uh, you can look at the headings in order to get a general idea, for instance. The next item that you should know about is about the importance of highlighting or underlying because uh, the keywords are very important. When you read the question, underline the keyword. And if you are going uh, for a computer dealt with one, you've got that kind of function as the highlighter. So you can highlight the questions. And uh, the next item is about the instruction because the instruction is very important. If you are supposed to answer the question with a word and your answer contains two words, you are going to be penalized and you are not going to be given any score for it. Why? Because you haven't respected the instruction at all. Check your spelling, uh, just, you know, the word is uh, in your text and you have to take it out uh, from the uh, in a passage and just take care of it and write it correctly. That's everything that you need to do, you know. You do not need uh, to think about the spelling because the word exactly is written in your passage and you have to just uh, take care of it and write it correctly. Uh, write clearly is very important as well because some people have got problems with writing. You know, if the CM or the clerical marker cannot read what you have written, clearly that is your problem because uh, they are not going to give you the score that you want. So for example, if you meant L but your L uh, seems to be an E, I wouldn't give you the score because it is like an L for me, you know what I'm talking about? So you have to write very clearly if you're going to take part in a paper-based uh, exam. And remember, you're not going to be uh, penalized. So if you do not have time, if, if you do not have the idea about the questions and answers and you're running out of the time, just go for some predictions. You know what I'm saying? Just guess the answer. For example, if it is a true, false, not given, just go for true, all of them true. Maybe some of them are going to be correct. Remember, you are not going to be penalized for your wrong answers. And that is very nice because you've got the chance so that maybe some of them are going to be correct if you're lucky. Are you lucky? I hope you are lucky. So don't worry about the words you do not know because unusual words will be explained in the text. Of course, you are not going to be given the same exact words, but if the words are somehow difficult and you have no idea about the words meaning, be sure that the words uh, or the uh, you know lexical resources that you're looking for are going to be explained indirectly in your uh, let's say, uh, article or passage. Many times I see that candidates, uh, you know, lose their train of thought because they have no idea about the meaning of some words. Remember that if you do not know about uh, some words, um, there are two possibilities. Maybe they are not important and you do not need them, so you should ignore them. And if they are important and they are key, uh, they are going to be explained later on in the passage. So don't worry at all because you are not supposed to know about the meaning of every word that is presented in the passage. Okay, That is very important and heartwarming to have uh, some uh, thoughts about this because otherwise you will lose your confidence. The next item that you should be careful of is about the questions that you have no idea about their answers because sometimes students are somehow stuck with a very specific question and they, um, you know, forget about the time limit. If you do not understand the meaning or, you know, the answer to one question, uh, go for the next one and at the end of the test, if you've got time, you will come back and try to uh, just answer that more carefully. Otherwise, you will uh, go for the other questions and try to save your score that way. Make the most of every opportunity to use English. You should embrace every opportunity. You should seize every chance. Read a variety of texts, not just your university books, but popular newspapers or magazines. And remember to read actively. When you read a piece of writing or an article, just go for some questions. Think of the kind of questions that the uh, test designer would go for. You know, this, this is called uh, reading actively. 
set targets for your preparation and say something like this, I'm going to read a page today and make some questions or I'm going to learn 20 vocabulary today. Your spelling should be checked every now and again. If you've got some words uh, as kind of, you know, mistakes, uh, try to take a note of the problematic ones or the tricky ones and you should be, uh, you know, uh, reviewing them every now and again in order to learn them by heart. And the next thing is about uh, academic and general training. So you should make up your mind whether you've got any choice or no. Uh, you know, it depends on your situation. Maybe there's no choice. You have to just uh, respect uh, the requirement. If you have to go for the academic, you have to just go for that one. If you need uh, the general training certificate, you have to go for that one. Know how you'll be scored. The scoring system is very important. Uh, so there is a chart uh, presented by um, IDP. So make it clear that you need six, you need a seven, you need, for example, 7.5 or something like that. Most people are okay with six or 6.5 for academic pursuits. And when it comes to general training module, uh, it has to be uh, clarified by the agency with, uh, with whom you are just working. So maybe a seven or maybe an eight, depends on the kind of circumstance and the kind of visa and the country that you are applying for. Uh, the choice and actually the requirements would vary. IELTS preparation courses uh, focus on test taking and language skills. So remember that firstly you should focus on your general English and then you go for different kinds of classes like preparation courses and you've got some ideas about the whole story uh, for your IELTS journey. But uh, before that you need to be prepared for the general English as well. So as I told you, for example, you need a lot of words to be known. Work on your general English firstly and then go for techniques and the strategies with which you can level up your understanding. A bound IELTS 7 represents many hours of learning and using English and that is why it seems to be difficult and everybody in the whole world know about that. So when you say that I've got a 7 in the reading, they understand that uh, you are good at uh, English and you can read uh, perfectly. So what I'm saying is that if you need a 7 or 6 or whatsoever, you need to be a good reader depends on the score, uh, that level would uh, increase or decrease a bit. Take a long-term approach. So as I told you, try to really learn English and, uh, you know, invest in uh, learning in the long-term period. And anything you do in English will help you improve your language skills. Anything, making a list, reading some stories, reading newspapers, uh, just taking a look at the, uh, you know, magazine or something like that. Everything that you do in English will help you in the long run. Push yourself to use English every day and everywhere. If you've got a friend who speaks English, just try to communicate with him or her. Try to uh, just Google things in English in order to understand what uh, your answers are because little by little, gradually, uh, you can understand that uh, you are improving. Maybe the improvement is not that much fast, but in fact, you are improving and that is all which matters for us. So thank you for watching this uh, video and I hope that uh, this has um, some advantages and benefits for you and you've learned something out of it. And as you know, I will be so happy to see your comments, guys. If you've got any questions, you can just uh, drop it down below because I will definitely read your questions. And uh, I will be so happy to see that you guys are watching this and uh, you are taking some advantages out of it. So uh, take care of yourself and uh, I hope that you will subscribe to this channel. See you soon. Bye-bye.